Hello and welcome to this video from the EXP group for ACCA paper F1 Accountant in Business. Today we're going to be looking at chapter 2 of our express notes and the, these express notes can be obtained free of charge from our website. This chapter looks at culture, looks at organizational culture and stakeholders. First of all the, the word cloud. As you'll see, some of the key words here, culture, as you'd expect, we're also going to be looking at what is known as a committee. We bring in stakeholders as well. Now let's, let's get going. Okay, first of all, let's look at what do we mean by the term culture? What is the culture of the organization? What does it mean? According to uh, Charles Handy, a very well-known management theorist, Culture is the way we do things around here. Now, culture is actually, um, everyone knows what culture is, what the culture of their organization, what the culture of their, their university, what the culture of their workplace is like, but it's quite difficult to actually define it. Things that will impact on it in real life, the size of the organization, the age of the organization, generally the, the bigger the organization, the older the organization, the more formal the culture will be. What about the product or service that is supplied? For example, if it's a software company, then that's likely to be a, a culture of discovery, of new things, of, of generating ideas. Technology used, geographic diversity, brings in issues such as the cultures of countries, of regions, and if you have parts of your business operating there, that's going to impact on the culture. Okay, if we look at page 15, look at the next page, that brings us on to various theories on culture, which I'm afraid for ACCA F1, you're going to have to learn these theories. The first one, Sheen. He argued that the culture of an organization is established, is created by the first leaders. So, culture is established by the first leaders, and any future people that come in to lead that organization generally follow the culture. So in other words, the, the, the culture is established by the original leaders. Generally, that will be the original founders. They create the culture, and as people then come in, they will follow the culture. He also identified three levels of culture within a business. We have artifacts. These are things which you can see, easily seen. Espoused values. So, you know, what are the values that the organization um, talks about? What are their strategies? What are their goals? And also the final one we've got, what are the basic assumptions behind that business? It could be relatively difficult to identify. So just to conclude on, on, on this theory, he argued culture is created by the original leaders and any future leaders that come in will follow the culture that's been established. The next one we're going to have a look at is Charles Handy. Charles Handy we mentioned a moment ago when he said culture is the way we do things around here. Well, Charles Handy wrote a book, Management Gods, and he compared Greek gods to the theory of culture. He identified four cultural stereotypes based on Greek gods. The first one he called the power culture or the Zeus culture. Now this type of culture is generally found in smaller types of organizations and here you will have a central power source and all the ideas, all the decisions will originate from that central power source. And this major source of power generally would be the founder of the business, the owner of the business. In a, typically there could be a small business with the boss and three or four assistants or people who work with him or her and that would typically be a power, a Zeus culture. What's good about this? Well, it enables the organization to react quite quickly because there's only one 
source of power, so decisions can be made quickly. You can react to competitors, you can react to opportunities quite quickly. The second culture is the role culture. So Handy called this the Apollo culture. Now typically you would find this in slightly larger organizations and here there's an emphasis on roles, on hierarchies. So emphasis on structured hierarchy can be bureaucratic. So typically you would have different pillars within an organization. That pillar could be the production pillar, sales, research and development. So you would tend to find that type of culture in a larger organization. The next one, the third one, task Athena culture. Now this is based around projects, based around getting things done. You compared it to almost to a net, a fishing net where the strength is in the join, in the knots. And this culture is all about teams getting together and working on projects. So the culture is about getting in together for projects and getting the task done. The final one, person. Dionysus, Greek god of wine. Now according to this theory, according to this culture, the organization exists purely to satisfy the needs of individuals. Relatively unusual to find that in real life, but it could be, for example, a, a social club, a golf club where it, it exists to satisfy the needs of the individuals within that club. So we've got power culture, typically found in smaller type of businesses. We've got role culture, which would be found in larger businesses where there's independent production, sales, research and development. We then have task culture, typically found within project-based organizations such as accounting firms, advertising agencies, and then we've got the person culture. Okay, the next theory I'd like to look at today, Hofstede. Hofstede. Now, Hofstede did a lot of work on international perspectives on cultures. So he looked at what happens within various countries. Now he identified a number of characteristics and these vary according to each country. Now the first one, we have power distance. What happens within individual countries when it comes to accepting orders, accepting inferior positions? So how do people react, how do they accept the distance between power? Individualism. Do people like to work individually or do they prefer to work together in a group? Certain cultures prefer individualism, others prefer working together in groups. The next one, masculinity. Okay, how, how masculine is a culture? So how different is a focus on gender roles? Okay. Is it quite easy to split between a man and woman, between male and female roles, or are there, do there tend to be clear masculine, clear feminine roles? Uncertainty is the next one. How do cultures accept this concept of uncertainty? Do certain cultures try to reduce uncertainty? Do others just live with it and accept it? Final one, the long-term orientation. What is the attitude towards change over time? Okay. Right, that's just a, a very quick look through uh, three theories and three writers on cultures, Sheen, Handy, and Hofsted. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, the next video we're going to be looking at stakeholders, and we'll continue with chapter two of these notes. So thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye.